So you're looking for solar panels and you've seen there's two different kinds. You've got the mono and the polycrystalline panels. So what's the difference between the two of them? What are the advantages, the disadvantages, and which one would be the best one for your setup to choose? In this video, I'll give you the relevant information that you need in order to be aware of the difference between the two of them. And then by the end of this video, you should be able to make a well-informed decision about which kind is best for your setup. Before we go ahead, let me introduce myself. My name is Jesse, I'm a renewable energy engineer, and I'm specialized in off-grid battery-based solar energy systems. I have run companies in the design and installation of off-grid solar energy systems, and I've held the position of energy officer for the United Nations. I founded the company Solar Solution, through which I provide videos such as this. I share my knowledge and experience through articles, and I provide personal direct support through services on my website. So I'll provide you the relevant information in four different steps. First, we'll look at what the actual difference is between the two panels. We'll then look at the difference in performance and energy efficiency. We'll look at the different sensitivities to changing sunlight. And the last step, I'll give you a general conclusion and a very specific tip. So let's look at the actual difference of the panels and how they're being made. So both panels are made from silicon, but in order to make the monocrystalline panels, they take the silicon, they melt it down, and then they start a process that really reminds me of the old school way in which to make candles. They've got this liquid bath of silicon. They take what they call a seed crystal, so a small piece of crystal. They hang it into this liquid. They sm slowly turn it around and slowly pull it out of the liquid. This then forms a kind of cylindrical shape, which is the basis for the monocrystalline solar panel. In order to make polycrystalline cells, they take the silicon and they do something that reminds me of making chocolate. So they melt down all the silicon, they've got this big rectangular shape and they pour the liquid silicon in there and as the silicon then cools down it hardens and it forms different kind of crystals which forms the polycrystalline cell. So let's look at the next topic regarding the difference in performance and energy efficiencies. So a polycrystalline cell has a maximum theoretical performance of up to 23% whereby 23% of the sun power that hits the cell is converted into usable electricity. Now, the maximum limit of the monocrystalline cells is always higher, can go up to 28%. Now, let's see how we can take these cells and turn them into a panel. So, if we want to make a monocrystalline panel, we take these round cells, we cut off the sides in order to make a square, and then with all these squares, we make one panel. Now, since we cut off the sides and throw them away, this is one of the reasons why the fabrication cost of a panel increases. The overall efficiency of the panel itself is always lower than the efficiency of the cells. So the, um, the average value of a monocrystalline panel is between 17 and 22% efficiency. In order to make a polycrystalline panel, you just take the original square cells and use them to build the panel. Now the same is true as for the monocrystalline, so the overall efficiency of the panel is lower than the cells themselves, and it roughly varies between 15 and 20%. So now let's look at the difference in performance under varying sunlight conditions. When you look at it in detail, you can see that there's a slight difference in performance between the monocrystalline and the polycrystalline panels. The monocrystalline panels can perform up to 2% better compared to the polycrystallines. The reason for this is that the monocrystallines are less susceptible to change in output as the cell temperature changes. And typically the voltage from a monocell is a little bit higher than a polycell. So this brings us to the conclusion and my tip for you. So if you want to have the very best, the highest performing panel out there, you would want to choose the monocrystalline panel. But my tip for you is this. What often happens is that people remember this information. They think, okay, I want to have a monocrystalline panel. But then what happens? You go to the store, you say, I want to have a monocrystalline panel. The salesperson gives you a wide variety of options. You know, the best ones are the most expensive and the cheaper ones. And then if you would choose for a mid-range monocrystalline panel. If you would compare the price that you pay for this panel and take that cash and spend it on one of the highest quality polycrystalline panels, which are generally a lot more affordable, then you might actually be better off, you might be getting a better value for your dollar if you spend it on the polycrystalline. So now a question for you. If there's something else that you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments below. I use this as inspiration to provide more videos for you or for others. If you like the video, it's always nice to hear, uh, so give me a thumbs up. So that's all for now. See you in the next video.